The Marvel Cinematic Universe kicks off its latest phase with the latest adventures of Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania on Mark's Movie Reviews. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Mark Cap is here on another installment of Mark's Movie Reviews. The general consensus seems to be that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in a bit of a rebuilding phase right now. In the wake of Avengers Endgame, they're still figuring out where to go next. Phase 4 seemed to be all about introducing new characters and getting people accustomed to the concept of the multiverse. And now, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is here, the official kickoff to Phase 5, which introduces our next Thanos-level villain, the master of time travel known as Kang the Conqueror. The fact that they chose to introduce our next big bad in an Ant-Man film, which has traditionally been the lower stakes films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is an interesting move. But, is it an interesting move that pays off? <laughs> We finally catch up with what Scott Lang has been doing after the events of Avengers Endgame. With his newfound celebrity status, he's written his memoirs and is living a life of leisure. Hope Van Dyne, aka the Wasp, has regained control of her father's company and is working to use their shrinking technology to better the world. Scott's daughter Cassie, though, has grown frustrated with her father, believing that he's lost his way as a hero, as there are still many more injustices out there. Cassie has been working with Hope and Hank Pym to develop technology to map the Quantum Realm, the subatomic universe where Janet Van Dyne was trapped for 30 years. The experiment goes haywire and everyone is sucked into the Quantum Realm. There they find a thriving civilization which is now living under the boot of a brutal warlord known as Kang. Janet must confront the demons from her past, Scott must once again become the hero his daughter wants him to be, as the only way home is for them to liberate this world from Kang. <laughs> This film has a cosmic scale to it that, up until now, has been reserved for the Guardians of the Galaxy films. We are visiting strange new worlds, and there's a wide variety of strange new creatures who reside in the Quantum Realm. Chief among those strange new creatures is beloved Marvel villain MODOK, who finally makes his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And because MODOK is such an absurd villain, he is absolutely hilarious. We got a great sense of humor to this film. Paul Rudd, as always, charming and funny. Cassie Lang is growing into a fine hero herself. She'll probably have some good things to do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe moving forward. But of course, the big thing here is the introduction of Kang. Based on what we see in this film, I think he's going to be a fascinating villain moving forwards. <laughs> I know some people online have been ripping on the CGI. The special effects are mostly fine. The only issue I really had was with MODOK's face. I mean, in order to make that character design work, you have to stretch out the actor's face to such ridiculous extremes that it kind of pulls you out of the film. And you know, I wish the Wasp had more to do. I mean, her name is right there in the title, but most of her role in the film seems to be, oh my gosh, mom, how come you never told us about this? <laughs> I had a blast with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It reminded me a lot of Eternals. Like Eternals, it introduces you to a lot of new concepts and new characters. But unlike Eternals, it's having a lot more fun with it. On my patented nib scale, I give it a solid 3 out of 4 nibs. Ooh. 